of love. That's where Joshua and I are now after a quick work trip to Milan. Of course, in one day, I managed to cry because of how grand the Eiffel is. And we also got to see an awesome light show. My surprise to Joshua. Second full day in Paris today and we find ourselves in Chinatown where our b and is right smack in the middle of. Of course, we couldn't resist the lure of Asian cuisine. Also, Chinese food is pretty cheap fare when in this expensive city. Where where? A, a very busy Chinese restaurant. Uh, we are in Shen, which is why it's She Shen. Of, of Shen. Is that French or Chinese? Oh, so She is French. It's a French word for being in someone's uh -huh. house. It's like being in someone's dwelling. Uh -huh. So if I was at your place, I would be like Shen Wu, like I'm at your place. Okay. So Shen Shen. So Shen is the chef, I guess. Look at all that food though behind you. Look at that. So the LGBT center is over there. We passed that. We passed by that yesterday. But this whole um, square. Look at the pedestrian crossing. <clears throat> Cappuccino. Mm, yes. Wait. Sure, but also let me look at this. What are these? Ooh. I would say hold your desserts. Yeah, okay. Okay, I just want a cappuccino. This is City Hall. Yes. Oh, that's a pretty City Hall. Okay, uh, I can't believe I forgot about this. It's a holiday on Sunday or um, on Monday. It's the Armistice holiday. I read this when I was getting ready for the trip. Is that, is that Notre Dame? Is where? That? You see that pillar right there, the square? Oh! <laughs> you don't know what Notre Dame looks like? Nope! <laughs> you don't remember from, from freaking uh, movie? Nope! Oh, but this is pretty! has a river cutting into it and then so geographically there's the east bank and the west bank right and now we're in the middle <laughs> was built in 1160 and completed in 1260 but then at some point during the French Revolution the whole place was designated. It was ruined, it was in shambles. It was until um, 1831 when Victor Hugo's Hunchback of Notre Dame sparked interest in the church and that's when they began to rebuild it. Hmm. So, so it, was, it, was a, it was a piece of fiction that caused people. Yep. Wait, oh, wait. Oh. And then it, it's so funny because if you if you read further back into history, supposedly this area where the church was built 
It was a pagan ritual area. And then they built a church on it. And then... So let's go and meet Quasimodo. We're just gonna walk by. Tower where Quasimodo was like dangling. The two, uh -huh. those are both bell towers. Oh, oh, those are bells. Oh, they're covered, but behind them are bells, yes. The bells are covered by those tarps. That looks bigger than we thought it would be. Well, we came up right close to it. If, uh -huh. if you were to come in through the, like the metro, uh -huh. or the more conventional method of getting in there, we would. There, uh -huh. which would make it look a lot simpler. You know, the other thing, most things are small when you watch them on a TV. <laughs> They're a lot bigger once you go up to it. Yep. Just saying. Who's that? I, uh, no idea. Charlemagne. I know, okay. I'm trying to remember what he did. He conquered shit, right? Um, that's good. Let's go. Let's go. Dessert? Yes. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> For someone who hates tourists, you are the most touristy person I know today. Whatever. On, the, on, on this trip, you are the most touristy person ever. Babe, this is where Quasimodo lives. How can you? <laughs> sure. All the all the all the priests and the monks and the pastors who lived here, who actually stayed and made this cathedral what it is, are probably like, God, why? Why did you do this to us, God? So we watched a night's tale last night. And one of the characters was Geoffrey Chaucer. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey. Who, Je Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Jeffrey Chaucer. Not King John. Who was actually a writer. And at some point in the story, he goes like, I will have my revenge on you. And they go like, how? What are you going to do? And he's going to be, he, he said, I will have my revenge on you through the history books. Yeah, I will write the worst things about you. Yeah. And that's basically what Victor Hugo did though. It's pretty cool how fiction can shape reality this much. Yeah. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't think all these people would be here had it not for had it not been for that movie. Speaking of history books and literature, our next stop is a famous bookstore. We take our time walking because Paris is the perfect place to do so. So perfect, they even have a word for it. Flaneur, to wander with no purpose or to stroll leisurely. Shakespeare and Company, it's a, it's a library. Mm -hmm. uh, I think famously, from what I remember, this is where Ernest Hemingway, when he became an expatriate of yeah. France and Paris after the war, uh -huh. this is where he would go. And also, if you saw that movie Before Sunset with Ethan Hawke and... I forget. Anyway, the Before Sunset series, one of the meetings, it was actually said in this tiny bookstore. We leave our cameras at the door, though I later learned that this isn't the first Shakespeare and Company where the likes of Hemingway, Fitzgerald, and Pound have spent time in, it's still iconic for its history. And well, like I said, before sunset. That was actually the prettiest bookstore I've ever seen. Um, at some point you get distracted by the bookstore itself because it was so nice. What are we doing? 
you are peeing. <laughs> I'm done peeing. Uh, in the cafe, right next to Shakespeare and Company, where I got a book. You can say I'm into self-help. She got me a book about tea, but not only is it about tea, uh, it also connects tea to Taoism and Zen mindsets, which is what I was looking for with book. It has like those nice baths. <laughs> That's all the Louvre up there. That's all the Louvre? That's a big Louvre. <laughs> mm -hmm. That whole thing is the Louvre. We're going there tomorrow. tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, well, I mean, that's the hope. That's the hope. But, but as if, you can... if it is the holiday, it's going to be like what, five times worse. Yeah, so we have to go there super early. <laughs> we did a quick detour. That was the Louvre's facade. And that was the inverted pyramid. Um, we just found out that if you look straight across, you'll see the Arc de Triomphe. Okay, babe, tell me what. What what's going on here? It took 13 years to make the statue of a woman admiring her ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally something, you know, that's it's a great activity I guess. It's totally doable. She didn't have a camera so she just had to <laughs> Oh, you. Okay, let's go. We capped the day off with something sweet from Angelina's, a famous Parisian hot chocolate spot. On the next vlog, we actually visit the Louvre.